All right, type three graph analysis multiple choice problems. In question two, we're given a function, 300x minus x cubed, and asked to find which intervals the function is increasing. We're going to take the first derivative. We're going to set the first derivative to zero, find my critical values, use the number line to figure out where the first derivative is positive, and we find that that's between negative 10 and 10, so our choice is b. In number five, we're asked about which one of the following are false. Going through each of the choices, the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is true. A whole is okay. Part b, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 is also true. Sharp corners are okay for limits. In choice c, the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x, this is false. This does not exist because the right-hand limit doesn't equal the left-hand limit. In part D, the limit as x approaches 5 exists, nothing interesting there, and the function is continuous at x equals 3, continuous but not differentiable. In 15, we're given a graph where a portion of the graph is below the x-axis and a portion is above. We're asked to compare h of 6, h prime of 6, and h double prime of 6. Since we know um, that h of 6 is the area from 0 to 6. We know that that's going to be negative because it's the area underneath the curve. h prime is equal to f of 6, which from the graph is equal to 0. This should be h double prime of 6. It's the same thing as f prime of 6, which are slopes. The slopes are positive, and so our choice is a when we order them from least to greatest. In 17, we're given the graph of f. f looks something like this. Um, we know that f prime is equal to g. Since f prime is the slopes of the given graph, they're all always positive. So g of x is going to be a constant positive function, and that is choice a. In 21, we're asked which of the following equations has y equals 5 as a horizontal asymptote. You need to think n behavior, meaning taking the limit as x approaches infinity of these functions and you want it to equal 5. All right, so the first one, as I go to infinity, this limit's going to be 0. Choice b, 5x, is going to go to infinity as x goes to infinity. Choice c, 1 over x minus 5 is actually going to go to 0. The 5 becomes insignificant and 1 over infinity goes to 0. Choice D, 5x over 1 minus x. Again, the 1 becomes insignificant, but that's going to be negative 5. And so our answer is choice E. The 1 and the negative x become insignificant. When I simplify that, I'm going to get a choice, I mean a horizontal asymptote of 5. All right, in 22, we're given a function ln of x over x. This is only defined for values greater than 0 due to the ln of x in the function. I'm going to take the first derivative, simplify it, and then set that equal to 0 because we're trying to find what the absolute max is. So I find that x is equal to e. I'm going to test this, and I know I go from positive to negative, and that's going to give me a value where the relative extrema occur. However, since this function is increasing to e and then decreasing, I'm going to plug e into the original function, I get 1 over e, or choice b, is what the absolute max is. In 24, we're given x squared times e to the kx. Again, I'm looking for what value of k does g have a critical point when x is 2 thirds. I'm going to take the first derivative. I'm going to factor out e to the kx. I'm going to set the factored piece equal to 0. e to the kx is always going to be positive. I'm going to factor out an x, set them both equal to 0. I get x is equal to negative 2 over k. We want to know what k is when that x value, where it has a critical value, critical number is 2 thirds. Solving that, I get k is negative 3, or choice A. In 26, we're given g prime is that integration from 0 to x of e to the negative t squared dt. G double prime, then, is just going to be that function e to the x squared, excuse me, negative x squared. That's going to look something like this. And we're looking, the area underneath that curve is always going to be positive from 0 to 2. We also know that G double prime is actually equal 
to e to the negative x squared was also will always be positive. Since both of those are positive, my function g is increasing and the graph of g is concave up. In 76, we're given this graph here that I've drawn, that is f, um, and we're trying to find at what point f prime is positive and increasing. So I want to know when f prime, or the slopes are positive, or when it's concave up for it to be increasing. That happens at, at point E, and so our choice is E. 78 is the calculator problem. We're going to put that E to the 10x minus 2 into the calculator. We're going to find its intersection with the x-axis, which happens to be 0.60611. We're going to store that in alpha A. And then we're going to use the calculator, second calc number 6, to find that dy dx, and that's going to give us choice D. In 80, we're given a picture that looks as I've drawn here in the blue. We're trying to figure out which of the three choices are true. So choice 1 says f has a relative minimum at negative 3. That is true because the f prime changes from negative to positive, so we know we have a relative minimum. Choice 2 says the graph of f has a point of inflection. To have a point of inflection at x equals negative 2, f prime has to change from either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing to be point of inflection. We don't have that, so choice 2 is false. Choice 3 says the graph of f is concave down, which means we're looking for the slopes of f prime. They are indeed negative from 0 to 4, and therefore we do have f double prime being negative, and we have concavity that is down. So our choice is E. In 82, we're given this complicated function for f prime, square root of x to the fourth plus 1 plus x cubed minus 3x. I'm going to graph that in the calculator and see where it changes from positive to negative. And that happens at, at point 0.350 or choice C. In 83, we're asking for the total distance traveled, which would be the area underneath the velocity curve from 0 to 8. So I'm just sort of going to estimate, kind of count squares. Each height has, or each square has height 10, where the base is 1. So that's how we get 210 feet. In choice, in problem number 84, um, we're given this kind of complicated function again for f prime e to the x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1 minus 2. I'm going to put that into my calculator and find when the slopes of f prime are negative, and that happens at choice d. In question 85, f prime is shown, and you're trying to find the function has a local maximum when x equals what? So we're looking for when f prime is changing from positive to negative, and that happens at choice C, or x equals 1. And number 87, we're given the graph of f double prime. We're asking what intervals on which the graph of the function is concave down. So we're looking for when f double prime is less than 0, which are values underneath the x-axis, which would be choice E. And number 3, we're looking for the integration from 0 to 4 of f of x. That's the area underneath the curve. So we're going to have to break this up from 0 to 2, which equals 6, and from 2 to 4, which equals negative 6. Adding those two together, we get 0 or choice b. And number 11, we're getting the square root of the absolute value of x minus 2. We all know what the absolute value of x minus 2 looks like. It kind of looks like a v. The square root of that is just going to sort of soften the um, slopes as we come into that point, x equals 2. Looks sort of like the given graph I have given you there. That one is going to be continuous at 2, but not differentiable. That's choice A. And number 12, we're given two ordered pairs, negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 5. We're also given a differential equation, x squared plus y. When I plug in 1, negative 5, dx, dy, excuse me, dy, dx does not equal 0, so it's not a critical number. When I plug in negative 1, negative 1 into dy, dx, I do get 0. Taking the second derivative, we get 2x plus dy, dx. We already know dy, dx is 0. 2x, when x is negative 1, is going to give me something less than 0, which means we're concave down, which means I have a relative maximum, and that is choice C. In 15, we've done this before, but this is choice A. 
In number 18, we're given the graph of f prime. We're asked to find the value of f negative of f of negative 5 using FTC number 1. We know that the area underneath the curve from negative 5 to 2 of f prime of x dx is f of 2 minus f of negative 5. Algebraically manipulating this expression, we get f of negative 5 equals f of 2 minus the integration from negative 5 to 2 of f prime of x dx. Remembering this is area underneath the curve. I'm given f of 2 is 1, and then I have a triangle and a semicircle underneath the x-axis. My answer when I distribute the negative is 2 pi minus 2, or choice A. 21 is a repeat. 76 is giving you a picture similar to the one I've drawn in blue. Which one of the following choices is false? f is continuous at x equals 0, f is differentiable, that is false because of sharp corner, so that's our choice b, but we're going to go through the rest of them. Choice c says it has a critical point, that is true because the derivative is undefined at x equals 0, f has an absolute minimum at x equals 0, that is also true, and then choice e, the concavity of f changes at x equals 0, that is true because it goes from concave down to concave up. In 78, we're given the picture of um, f, and we're to find and evaluate from negative 1 to 9 of 3 f of x plus 2 dx. I'm going to separate this integration into two parts. It's easy to do the integration from negative 1 to 9 of 2 dx. That gives us a value of 20. When I'm finding I'm going to the area underneath the curve of 3 f of x, I'm going to factor out that 3. We're going to go from negative 1 to 9 to f of x. The area from negative 1 to 3 is negative 3 and a half. I just added the squares and the, and the triangle. And then we have the area of a triangle here from 3 to 9. Multiplying that by 3, I get 7.5 plus the 20 gives me choice C. Number 80, again, is a repeat. All right, in 81, we're given a table for f, f prime, and f double prime. We're also given in 81 that f of x is equal to f of negative x, which tells me that we have an even function. So when I graph this, I know I'm decreasing and concave down from 0 to 1, decreasing and concave up from 1 um, to 2, or whatever the other value is. I know I'm going to mirror that behavior on the other side. And so this is going to be choice D. We have points of inflection at both negative 1 and positive 1. 84 is a repeat. Number 88, we're given the derivative of f is increasing from x when x is less than 0 and decreasing when x is greater than 0. So if you look at choice E, we go from a very, very negative slope to almost 0, which means the slopes are increasing negative, say, 10 to negative 5 to negative 1, and then they're going from, say, negative 1 to negative 5 to negative 10. So that's why it's choice E. In 89, we're given acceleration, and we want to find the velocity of the particle when t equals 3. Well, I know the integration of acceleration from 0 to 3 equals v of 3 minus v of 0. That's FTC number 1. And so I'm going to rearrange this, bring over v of 0, which is given to be 5. And then with the calculator, I'm going to find the integration from 0 to 3 of a of t dt, 6.710. Add them together, I get choice e.